All right, and I believe we're live. Hello, everyone. This is David Kim uh, here in Santa Barbara, Montecito with the DK Group and Village Properties. I'm Devin Wong with the DK Group, uh, Village Properties as well. All right, and so today, really the focus of what we want to discuss is our local businesses and the best ways that we can support them. And obviously, we're not going to be able to cover all of them, but um, some of the ones that are near and dear to our hearts or maybe some of them that we've seen do really cool and creative things during this pandemic. Um, we just want to shine a spotlight. And uh, if, if, if people are liking what we're doing uh, and, and featuring here, then maybe we'll do a follow up to this as well. And what we're going to really, what we're going to try to do is link everything that we're talking about um, in the description here. So you guys can easily find it. Um, so I, I think I'm just going to jump right off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen here so that you guys can all see uh, what I'm looking at. But um, actually, just starting yesterday in Montecito, uh, it, we, we have a virtual cash mob. Now, we actually started doing a physical cash mob uh, after the debris flow in, in 2018. And, and the, the point of that was to um, really support the the businesses in Montecito that were really affected. You know, they had to shut down for a long time while things were being rebuilt and repaired. Um, it was again very devastating for these local businesses that thrive on tourism. And so uh, we were doing these cash mobs where everybody we we'd spend a day and everyone would go visit the local businesses, spend money. There'd usually be some live music, some some guest appearances by some of the local celebrities. Um, and so now, obviously, in the day and age of, of COVID-19, where we can't physically go and shop or go to these restaurants, um, we're doing a, a virtual, virtual cash mob where, as you can see on my screen, um, you know, you, you can look up either the upper village of Montecito, lower village of Montecito. You can look up by category, food, drink, hotels, retail. And essentially what you're doing is... Um, you, you, we're, we're buying gift cards uh, to, to keep these uh, businesses going, to help them pay their employees, to keep them operating. Again, we want to see these businesses make it through this pandemic. And, um, you know, I'm sure that every dollar counts. And this goes through Sunday. And um, there's going to be a, a little Zoom happy hour at 7 p.m. on Sunday where they're not saying who, they're being pretty discreet about it, but there's, there's gonna be some drawings uh, for prizes and uh, again, some special uh, local celebrity guest appearances on the virtual happy hour. Um, so anyhow, uh, feel free to log in. Again, we'll link this uh, down below, but this is a great cause. And obviously our office is actually on Coast Village Road in Montecito. So we, we love seeing a lot of these businesses and wanna see them thrive. Um, okay, and then moving on to the next one, something else that's really cool, my friends who um, actually started Dune Coffee Roasters, a little bit of background, they actually started off as the French press, if, if you guys can go back to that, that far, the, the early origins of the French press, and um, they actually opened up their first shop on State Street um, during the Great Recession, uh, I believe it was 2008 or 2009, so um, again, taking a gamble under a very uncertain time, uh, but they've thrived. And from that one shop, they, they've opened up another one downtown right next to where the farmer's market is on Saturdays. And then they opened one up in Goleta. And so something that's really neat that they're doing is they're called Dune Grams. And the way I found out is because my friend actually sent me a Dune Gram. And as you can see here, uh, they'll actually deliver and you have to place the order between, or no, the orders will be delivered between 7.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, the following day. So you place the order at night, you, the recipient gets it 7.30, 10 a.m. the following day. And this is the owner, Julia Mayer, um, and, and just a rock star. And this is what you're getting. You're getting two fresh squeezed OJs, you're getting two coffees, and you can specify some options and um, two pastries. And I think it's all for 25 bucks. Um, it's just a great deal and it's one of those things where when you receive it, you know, you get it at eight in the morning or whatever, it's like a godsend. You don't have to worry about making coffee or making breakfast and, you know, we have two girls at home so the OJ just got gulped down pretty quickly. Um, so again, that's Dune Coffee Roasters and they, they're calling it a Dune Gram. 
And I actually think they're only doing it certain days of the week, I think Tuesday through Friday. Okay, and then something else that's really cool that, uh, again, I found out because somebody sent it to me, is one of our um, local wineries in town, uh, Satellite SB, does something pretty cool. Um, they'll actually deliver a bottle of wine to you, but it just so happens that one of the partners named Brett Hunter is an incredible singer songwriter. He was actually on The Voice and he'll serenade you uh, as he delivers a bottle of wine. And as you can see, they are fully compliant with COVID-19, wearing the masks, keeping the social distance. And Brett actually came, dropped us off an awesome bottle of wine and serenaded me and my daughters and they loved it. Um, so, and then I think the next week I actually sent this to clients of mine who had the same experience. So um, if, if you wanna experience something like that, this is a great thing. It looks like they've reduced their price from $75 to $55. And it's well worth it, especially when we're all kind of, you know, stuck at home. This is a, a, some, some live entertainment that's coming to you. And then the last thing that I'll point a highlight on right now, and there's no photos of it or no images of it, but um, one of my clients, Jamie Costeco, started Wild Heart Events, and they, they do all sorts of event planning and designing, uh, mostly weddings, but they do all types of events. And obviously, as you can tell, they're probably struggling during this time not being able to, to, to do any weddings with all the social distancing. Um, but what she's doing now is, um, when she gets orders of paletas, which are Mexican popsicles, um, she's actually delivering them to your house. I think it's six paletas for $20 and they have some incredible flavors like, um, they have like real fruit, strawberry, mango, pineapple, watermelon, and then they have really yummy ones like Oreo cookie, um, pistachio is amazing. They have an avocado one, so just, killer popsicles and especially on a day like today where it's it's pretty hot outside that's a nice little welcome uh, reprieve from the heat so i'm gonna hand it over to devin now who's gonna spotlight or or uh showcase some other local businesses and what they're doing yeah i'm salivating now i could go for a popsicle today that sounds good yeah i got a couple at the house so <laughs> all right i'll, I'll be over i'm buying and get them but uh yeah, I'll be over here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, this site that that we're looking at now is the Santa Barbara uh, County Food Bank, and uh, you know typically they they'd be um, you know getting a bunch of donations, but right now it's as you can imagine it's a little bit slim. So that impacts everybody who you know relies on their services to keep food on the table. So one one service that they're they're promoting that uh, you know you can do yourself at home is simply um, picking extra fruits or vegetables from your home garden and donating it to them. So they're calling this gleaning. Um, mm -hmm. So you can glean any you know, spare produce that you've got um, on your property and they've got the, uh, the address here, one in um, Santa Barbara, one in Santa Maria. You can, you can take it down there and um, you know, give it to some uh, needy families. Um, the next thing we wanna show is on a news hawk here, they have um, an article about the, the new campaign that the city of Goleta is putting on. It's called Goleta to Go. And really it's a, a list of um, restaurants uh, that are open during this time. So letting you know who's doing business, um, who you can you know, help keep afloat as a lot of restaurants are struggling right now. So um, take a look at this list. And, and, who will, and who will deliver to you, right? I mean, cause that's important to know if you don't wanna be going out but you want to eat and you want to support and get get the food delivered to you. It's it, this is a great guide to to find out who's delivering. Yeah, exactly. Delivery or pickup. Either way, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of good businesses on here. So uh, be sure to take a look. And I'll kick it back to you, David. That kind of takes us into our next segment. Okay. So yeah, this is um, the other again what we're starting to see uh, during this time of crisis. I guess you'll call it. Um, is people who are really stepping up and probably what always impresses me is when kind of the next generation the younger i i, I laugh when i call them kids because i feel like i was a kid or maybe still am a kid to a lot of people <laughs> but um, i love seeing when kids really step up and take that initiative and so what i really want to um spotlight today is hang on bear with me 
is this group that actually started in Santa Barbara. They're called Zoomers to Boomers. And um, the name kind of gives it away, but it, it, what they're doing is this was actually started by a high school kid. His, it was his idea. And I think that his father might be an ER doctor as well. So he was able to really collaborate with his dad about, I'm sure like safety precautions and protocols and things like that. But to, to keep it short and sweet, what they do is they're this group of high school kids who will actually get groceries for boomers or more elderly people who maybe don't want to be in a crowded grocery store and they'll actually deliver the groceries to you. Um, and again, just what impresses me so much is I look where they're featured too. Good Morning America, Forbes, ABC. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of these places, but um, look at look at these kids who just again in this time are just stepping up, not thinking about themselves, thinking about how they can help other people. Again, kind of one of the more at risk demographics, right? And so I believe it was started by Daniel Goldberg and um, you know Alexander Wilson, Blake Lindblad, who I know that his parents are you know great parents and obviously raised a great kid. Uh, Taylor Wilson, Lily Bienstock, and Nat Sweeney. I mean, I just got to give a shout out to these kids. They're just doing incredible things. And I want to make sure to broadcast this to as many people as possible. And I think as of now, they've actually branched out of just Santa Barbara and they're doing, um, you know, a bunch of other areas as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I will actually pass the torch over to Devin now. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna highlight a couple more local businesses that are doing awesome things. Uh, one of which is Yardy, um, just an extremely successful software company, um, you know, based locally. Um, they recently donated two million dollars to food banks across the country. So uh, just to, just to have that kind of uh, leverage coming from a, a local business is amazing, helping out everybody they can. Um, another one is Kate Farms. Um, they, I saw that they donated half a million dollars of their own product, which is essentially a, a nutritional shake um, for seniors. So senior citizens um, get this shake and there's enough nutrition in there where um, it's essentially capable of being your only source of, of nutrition for an entire like day. replacement so, type thing. Yep, exactly, exactly. So they had a massive product donation. That's awesome. And then uh, I'm going to share the screen here to get to this last one. Let's see here. So, um, get to this other tab. So this is the Bucket Brigade and they, they kind of came about um, in one of the, the previous tragedies, which was the debris flow in, um, in Montecito and they were, you know, pivotal for helping the, the community bounce back from that. And they've continued the, the goodwill um, into this uh, scenario here. So if you go to their website, they've got a um, mask maker challenge. It's really neat. They'll provide all the materials um, that you need to actually sew these masks yourself. So all they're leaning on you for is the, the man hours um, and the sewing skills to put these together, but they'll provide the materials. They'll come back and, and pick them up and drop off more materials. And, uh, and if you're fast enough, you can win some, some pretty awesome prizes. They've got um, some swag, they've got um, gift certificates, you name it. So um, a very cool uh, campaign coming from the Bucket Brigade. Uh, just the latest in a long line of, of great stuff from them. Yeah, and just how impressive this group is, you know, who really started during that, you know, the tragedy of the debris flow, um, you know, basically doing that basic need of digging the mud out of people's homes where you couldn't get contractors to do that. And then to be able to pivot into current day where the need isn't mud in homes, but it's uh, PPE, you know, and mm -hmm. so they're actually making those those masks for people who obviously it's it's in need and in demand so yeah what what I, I just feel like fortunate living somewhere like Santa Barbara where we have so many impressive people um, to highlight and again this doesn't even touch the surface these are just the ones that you know we've been impressed with as of late and there are many many more mm -hmm. exactly and and on that note uh, the next thing we want to cover is some um, GoFundMe's. Um, so if you're not familiar with GoFundMe, it's essentially a crowdsourcing site where a bunch of people can contribute money 
Um, and there's a, a list of just, just uh, some select restaurants that we saw on the GoFundMe website. So we're gonna, gonna run down it right here. Um, we've got Arigato, Los Agaves, Los Arroyos, Opal and Oku, Enterprise, Jane, Brew House, Blue Water Grill, uh, Llama Dog, and there's plenty more, but those are just some of the select ones. So um, if you can take a minute, go to the GoFundMe website and search for those restaurants. Um, every, every dollar counts right now as they're trying to support their, their staff who you know, make their, their money by showing up in person to, doing, to do the work, and they simply can't do that right now. So um, any way we can keep these businesses afloat during this time, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, us like locals here in Santa Barbara, we've been to pretty much all of those establishments and we probably go several times. And so again, it's, it's, it's devastating to not be able to go and support in the normal ways. But um, now again, everybody's feeling this pinch. It's just business isn't the same, even though some of these places are doing takeout, it's just not the same as having it open where people can come in. I mean, full disclosure, I worked at Arigato Sushi for several years before I got into real estate. And I'll tell you, like, those guys, the sushi chefs, the management, the wait staff, the, the, the bus bussers, the dishwashers, they work so hard. Um, and just, you know, everybody relies on that source of income. So, you know, I know everybody's kind of hurting right now. So it, it's, it's, it's not easy to like dip into your pockets and, and, and give to other people when it might be tough for you. So I'm not, I'm not saying that obviously take care of yourself first, but if you do have the means or wherewithal, let's try to keep some of these local establishments. Like I think Arigato has been open for 30 years. I mean, I'd love to see them keep going. And again, it'd be a shame to see some of these uh, businesses, uh, even the thought of them having to close their doors because of what's going on. So um, really our, plea to everybody to, to help and support. And, the, and then GoFundMe is just easy. You just go on the GoFundMe website and you can search the Santa Barbara area just to see which ones are going on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. One of the, the stats that I think you talked about last week uh, with the, the economic forecast was something like 30% of you know, local restaurants are, might be at risk of shutting down to this. So if you can throw a few dollars their way and keep them afloat, that would be yeah. amazing. Exactly. Um, Speaking of statistics, we'll just we'll just move on to one quick little segment um, since this is you know after all a real estate centric uh, podcast. So we'll um, we'll just go over some quick stats from looking at the months of March and April. So March and April from this year, compare that to last year, and um, if you look at new sales and pending sales in you know essentially South County Santa Barbara, um, those are down between 70 and 80% uh, wow. over that same term last year. So mm -hmm. a big hit for new listings, um, not as many things going into escrow. Um, and one of the trends we saw in previous weeks was um, a real lack of activity at over 2 million. We saw some fairly good activity below that, but above 2 million was pretty slow. Yeah. That started to change. Um, you know, this, I looked at two weeks ago, um, there was, only two of the 21 pending sales were above 2 million. Only one of the 17 closings were above 2 million. And then looking now at this week, seven of 20 pending sales are over 2 million and nine of 28 new listings were over 2 million. So an incredible um, turnaround just in this past yeah. week for the, that little bit higher end. Yeah. And the reason we emphasize this is because in the area that we live in, of course, $2 million, $3 million, that's a ton of money. In Santa Barbara, we just, in our area, there are so much of our um, inventory, so much of the, so many of the properties are in that price range. And so um, we really like seeing that there's still activity going on there. And it's a good signal that we're going in the right direction as a, you know, we're, we're starting to see things ramp up as opposed to, you know, continuing to go down. So mm -hmm. you know, that's optimistic. We're seeing some of the high end properties in Montecito moving um, again, all good things for our local market. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, Hey, thanks for hanging out, hanging in with us again. Uh, this is, wasn't quite 42 minutes, but <laughs> probably still longer than we wanted it to be or anticipated to be. We're still kind of finding our craft, honing our craft. So uh, thank you. If you made it this long, congratulations. And uh, we are gonna have links uh, down below. And just again, uh, 
be sure to uh, support your local businesses tip your tip tip whoever is delivering your food really well i mean they're taking risks too so um let's just keep our keep our community in our thoughts exactly exactly well said thanks for tuning in take care everybody talk to you soon